When a person shows you who they are, believe them. And then what? Do you set specific boundaries for that person so you can continue to have them in your life and love them and give them grace but with just a little bit more boundaries or do you completely cut them off and move on with your life because you just have decided that maybe things are better in separation and how do you decide which one is the best for you and I think because this is so, well, this has been a very hard lesson for me, and I'm sure a lot of people, maybe with this journal entry and the conversation that I have with you today, you're going to be better able to decide what you should do if this situation comes up in your life, or if it is currently the theme in your life, and you realize that there's someone who expectations just were not met in certain forms and we all know expectations lead to disappointment anyway but this is someone whose disappointment was much of a blow and now you're trying to navigate this relationship navigate this friendship navigate this dynamic with you and another person because it's obvious that they will not change so i hope you enjoy this video and let's get started We use this specific phrase when a person falls short of our expectations or when we are disappointed. This phrase is given to a person as a lesson on how to stay in your power or letting a person recognize how through this relationship the power that they used to have was lost or they had given away their power. because. Every time we give someone um, the ability to hurt us, we in a way freely give them this power to do so. And until we create boundaries and maintain a regulation within our own feelings, we're just going to always run into situations where we're receiving disappointment because no one is perfect. Everyone has the ability to disappoint us. We even disappoint ourselves in some moments. But not every situation is black or white, right? I think when we are in relationships and friendships and our guard is down and we are vulnerable with these people, we do it in hopes that they are able to carry us, not necessarily like take on our loads, but able to hold us as delicate as we are, see that we need protection, and handle us with care, right? So if at any moment we experience someone being careless, it shocks us, right? But we have to take a step back, own our decision in doing that, and find the fine line between giving someone our hearts, but also still having it. Giving someone love, but also still existing in it. Allowing someone to exist in our lives, but not allowing them to alter our experiences, our decisions, and what we choose to do. Hmm. This is very loaded, and I'm still trying to find the right words to express what I mean. The difference between owning your power, giving it away, someone can betray you someone can do xyz and those things can hurt but it's how we choose to move forward that is a determining factor whether we're in our power or not and if we believe that the person is who they are saying that they are right now what about the version of themselves that they will be when they decide to change and grow and just see things from a different perspective we all maybe we're so much different from who we were a couple of years ago and we were given that amount of grace and time and room to grow and learn by the grace of the divine but also people had to experience us in whatever way we decided to show up you know it takes amount of love to actually see yourself or someone to actually show you who you're being in the moment for you to make the decision to say okay this is who i am being i don't want to continue this way maybe this is the motivation for me to make a change in my life and everyone has to take their own time to do that for themselves just simple fact we are evolving ever-changing and growing human beings this is why this topic is so fascinating to me because 
it's just we have to give people the same amount of grace that they give us but doing it in a way that doesn't strip us of our power doing it in a way that at the end of the day no matter who this person is being to others or to ourselves we're so rooted in who we are it doesn't really shake us even when we do set expectations like i i, I as a partner i set expectations for my other for my partner to show up in ways um that i chose him for right and so at the minute that it's not really aligning i have to make the right decision for myself but it's hard because I know he's going to change and he's going to grow and I'm going to change and I'm going to grow as well. So hopefully with this journal entry, like I said, you will be able to better have this conversation with yourself to answer the question. They showed you who they are. Now what? I once knew a girl in love with a guy, much like her mother loved her father, and she dreamed of marriage. Her face was fair, her priorities were acute, but in a way that aligned mostly with being a mother and an honest homemaker like she believed God wanted her to be. The only obstacle she faced was that the man that she loved had an appetite for women that she just could not prepare. And despite the meals that she slaved over, there was always a side under the table or at his job that he just could not shake. And this goes on and her parents warn her when a person tells you and shows you who they are believe them but without delving into the fact that she is also a witness of her father who had the same appetite a few years back and how her mother triumphed through the relationship at that time so so much like the example of her mother and maybe the women before her she stays they marry have children and enjoy vacations maybe a couple of times a year. I think this example is the hard reality in the power of choice. And what attributes about people, especially the people that you love, that you are able to accept, and that means something different for everyone. And no one can make that decision for you whether you decide to leave or stay, but Acceptance comes with a lot of realization and we have to be prepared for the emotions because they're not going to go away. But I think when we decide to say, this is my partner, I love them, this is my friend, this is my mother, this is my father, this is who they are, I'm going to love them and stand beside them, I think on the outside we assume that the feelings that we still have automatically go away and they don't they never do we just find ways to either communicate that person learns and grows so they don't put us through certain things anymore out of the love that they have for us or we create a psychological world where those people can exist where they are not completely causing a wildfire in our hearts and in our minds by the control that we have on how much we're able to give to them. I am a person much different. When I hear, when a person shows you who they are, believe in the first time, what my mind is telling me is when a person shows you that they deserve limited access to you, cut them off the first time. And that's someone who's, um, I'm a Virgo, you already know, I've experienced abandonment, I have so many experiences under my belt that have shown me, dang, I, I wish I would have cut you, cut you off sooner, dang, if I would have left this relationship sooner, my life would be XYZ, or not even that deep, but if I would have cut you off sooner, I would have saved myself this feeling right now. And maybe this feeling was all a part of my experience so I can receive a lesson that I probably would not have been able to had I not encountered this person. Then the more that I unpack, the more that I'm able to really see every part of the situation, I realize that this behavior makes me no different from the people that abandoned me. 
And because abandonment is like a, a wound that I'm growing through, I think that the only thing that can teach a person a lesson, the only really thing that I feel like is strong enough to affect a person is abandoning them, leaving but that's my wound. And so I bring that up in situations where it's really not even necessary because I want them to feel the punishment of what happens when they, leave, when, when they betray me. I want them to feel what happens when they're not on my good side, right? And all of that is so, it's so tit for tat. It's so not necessarily the most honest and pure open version of myself it's the hurt version of myself and if i decide that i want to be healed i can't continue to act upon the choices of a hurt person right hmm i think this is such an interesting time in my life where i'm seeing things so clearly and my mind is changing so rapidly that because of everything that i'm reading and digesting i can't help but be different and my ego that was once made of hard iron is now sharpened into something so paper thin who let me know in the comments is there someone you cut off in your life that you realize hmm you didn't necessarily need to let them go you just needed to create more boundaries with them also if you like this video let me know by hitting that like button sharing subscribing um it really helps me out a lot and i really want to do this so much more but i would appreciate it if you let me know how you felt about it the truth for me was that when a person showed me who they were because i could not change them i didn't see the value in them in my life anymore or maybe that they did have value but for what they had to offer it wasn't really aligned with what my ego needed so i perceived that as if you are not willing to change for me, if you're not willing to align with my frequency and do what I need and me and I, and if this isn't working for me, then I need you to exit, right? People come into my life wanting to meet my needs. People come into my life or existing to change for me. And if you do not change for me, why are you here? It was so like as a woman, I. I don't know how I created this, but when you spend so much of your life kind of going without, you create this mind within yourself that you want to give yourself everything that you deserve. You want to give yourself everything you want. You assume people coming into your life want to be a part of what is great and good in your life. So at any point that they are n not intentionally on that frequency, you don't know what to do with it, so you just kind of chuck it. And there's much more to be experienced by someone else, not just the things that stroke your ego, not just the things that make you feel good. I think the truth of it is that because life and certain conversations and the influence of other people's stories has done such a great job of changing me, I thought that because my intentions were good, I somehow had the ability to do the same for others. And then a light bulb struck me, literally. The difference and the minute but very important part of all of the change that happened to me was that I personally was open and ready for it. I was at a point where in order to exist in a frequency of the things that I wanted, there were a lot of fears and societal contaminations that needed to be filtered to fulfill my purpose. And someone slash something was able to identify me so clearly that what I saw for myself, the mirror that I saw, was my opportunity to change. And not everyone will feel that. I can't force that on anyone. Not everyone dedicates so much of their lives to healing and changing, really. They're not in the conversation, and that's okay. That's okay. And I think a lot of spiritually um, open people, outside of us really knowing our ego kind of side eyes anyone that isn't as aware as us and we're pushing away the very people that we want to be a part of this change i think 
if we start to see them as ourselves or a version of ourselves and handle them with a little bit more care because they truly deserve it, we're able to actually consciously break this cycle, break this mold of what society has poorly created us to be. And I had to realize that within myself in order to have this conversation. So that's why I'm here today. So I know it's kind of hard to accept and I know it's going to sound like, girl, what the are you talking about? But if you, if you understand, if you feel it, if you feel what I mean, please let me know. So I'm not the only one. Thank you. But not everyone will feel ready for change. I can't force that on anyone. Not everyone dedicates so much of their lives to healing and changing, and I'm on a different path, so my ego being laid to rest won't do to me what it may do to someone else that isn't trying to strip away their ego, doesn't really understand what that means. And I learned a lot of lessons through that, and I'm happy to share this version of myself that isn't perfect, that isn't good as on the the kooky side because we don't realize how much we identify with our ego or we don't realize how much we are allowing our ego to show up and make these decisions and play as a forefront of who we are when it's really completely not us. And a large part of manifestation is accepting that there are parts of your ego that need to be stripped away so you can move lighter to vibrate higher, to get to the frequency that you need to get to, to manifest everything that you need. So if I'm giving you a tool, if I'm sharing my story, it is only to help someone else in a real way that maybe most people might not see it as help. It takes a different type of experience to see and feel that what I'm doing is actually helpful and that's okay. This is why I'm opening myself up. So Whoever catches the wind of it will be able to bask in the breeze and really take this as something that is coming from a place of love, okay? I'm so thankful for the experiences in my life that revealed to me that I have the ability to hurt people too. So when a person shows you who they are, we believe it. And I think believing it is enough of an action to save you in the long run because when you know you take the responsibility away from anyone else outside of yourself to service you or cater to your needs and how you feel 100% of the time. When we completely detach ourselves from the actions of others and accept that they are doing them and we have to do us, we save ourselves the energy and maybe even the heartbreak We minimize opportunities to exist in victimhood, thus remaining in our power enough to create better realities for ourselves. And I know that sounds really weighted, but I think the light in you would shine brighter if you didn't allow whatever happened to you to do what you assume is a protection, but it's really keeping you from a lot of things. When you are authentically in your light and you're shining, not only is it bright enough to attract what you want, it's bright enough to blind the people that are not really able to exist and show up. I guess what I'm saying is, when a person shows you who they are, believe them, but shine anyway. I don't want anyone to stop you from loving the way that you do regulating ourselves, shining anyway, still being and trying to do good as best as you can, but maybe with a little bit of boundaries, is more in alignment with who you truly are as a soul, as a person of light, than doing them how they did you just because. Abandoning them when you know they need love just because. And, um... Yeah, still don't have it all figured out, but I feel like whatever I said was enough to share, enough to be of service, and enough to have the conversation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for listening to my journal entry. I will see you guys in my next video. I also, I cut my hair. What do you guys think of it? I feel like a pixie is, is just a little bit more me. You know, it's so interesting. I am going to also make another video about like my personal self-concept and what I'm doing to like 
exist fully as me so I can attract the things that I want because I felt like I was waking up every day n- not recognizing myself to a certain point and I'm slowly getting back to this version of me that I should have been a long time ago and it feels so good so I hope you enjoy this video happy full moon this is when I'm making this and I will see you guys in my next one bye